This is just going to be some random thoughts about the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 says, Revelation 20 verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So imagine this. Imagine being a lost person at this judgment, standing in front of the Lord Jesus Christ while he sits on his throne, and you're going to stand face to face with him. You're going to meet your maker. You know, prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your maker because you're going to be standing in front of him. There's going to be a day when the only thing that matters is what you did with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else will matter. Not how much money you made or how famous you were or how happy you were or how much fun you had. All that's going to matter is was there a day when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? So, John says, I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So imagine being a God-hater or a God-denier and have to look into the eyes of Jesus Christ at this judgment whose eyes are as a flame of fire. It says in Revelation chapter 1, and you were given plenty of evidence to believe that he was real. You may have never seen Jesus Christ, but you've been given plenty of evidence to believe that he's real. It says in Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. So you have no excuse. You can look around and see things, and you see the things of this world in nature the animals the people and you should be able to realize that this all couldn't just came about from nothing so don't you believe don't you believe that there is a god if you believe that there is a god you need to realize that the same god who made everything knew that you couldn't get to heaven on your own because you're a sinner so he died in your place the lord jesus christ died in your place he shed his blood and he was buried and rose again the third day and all you have to do to be saved is come to him as a guilty sinner and put your trust in that to be saved put your trust in him to be saved it says in psalm 14 and verse 1 the fool has said in his heart there is no god but at the great white throne judgment, you'll be seeing and believing. Right now, if you believe, you're doing it without seeing. And many times people don't believe because they feel like they haven't seen something that proves that God's real. But when they get to the great white throne judgment, they'll be seeing and believing. They'll see him face to face. It says in... Revelation 1.14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So when the lost sinner sees Jesus in this judgment, there will be nothing to distract him. He'll be looking eye to eye with those eyes that are like a flaming fire. And he can't say, I don't have time because of work, because of hobbies, because of friends, because of family. The saying we have all the time in the world won't work because the world will be gone. The saying will be, we have all time in eternity. And he will stand there and see God on the throne. No distractions this time. Just the maker and the sinner. And... The thing is, if he's being judged at this judgment, he's most likely already been in hell for a few thousand years. At least a thousand and seven years. And he's not being judged on whether or not he's going to heaven or hell. He's already been in hell. That's already been decided. What's being decided is 
how bad the lake of fire is going to be for him. And once you've been judged, you'll be cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Seeing will be believing. And the next thing, he'll be suspended on nothing. In Revelation 20:11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. You see, at this point, the earth has fled away. It's been burned up. It says in 2 Peter 3, 12, Looking forward and hasting into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. See, the sinner at the great white throne will be standing before God on nothing. The heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. They're, they're gone. It's not impossible because who do you think keeps the earth hanging on nothing? In Job 26, 7, it says, He stretcheth out the north over the in empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. So the sinners will be suspended up there, hanging on nothing, held up by God himself. So the lost sinner is standing up there with an infinite amount of miles below him, suspended on nothing, seeing and believing, seeing the Savior right in front of his face. And his story is examined. In Revelation 20 and verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So his story is examined. They will be judged out of those things written in the book according to their works. They had already rejected Jesus Christ. And it's already been settled that hell is their eternal home. Now it will be decided just how bad the lake of fire will be for them. So their story is examined. Their little book of their life will be brought out. And in Romans 2.16 it says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. In Matthew 12.36 it says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Nobody's getting away with anything. And Ecclesiastes 8.11 says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. You know, you may not be facing judgment for what you've done yet, but you're going to face it. Just because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily doesn't mean you should continue right on in that evil work. Imagine the story of a pedophile priest being examined. This pedophile priest that pretended to be a spiritual uh, mentor or father or somebody that someone could go to for help, and yet he's a sexual pervert. Imagine his story being examined. Imagine this man who all his life was a spiritual pretender, yet when his story is put on their projector up there, and I don't know if that's how they'll do it, I doubt that's how they'll do it, but just imagine that. And he's shown to be what he truly is. Imagine the humiliation. Imagine what's going to go through his mind and the fear that's going to be there. Daniel 2.22 says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. The Lord knows everything that's going on. He, he sees everything. Proverbs 15.3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Nobody's getting by with anything. Even the ones that think they've already got away with it, they've not got away with it. So, the sinner, he's going to be seeing and believing, suspended on nothing, as his story is examined, and he's going to be scorched by fire. Revelation 20, 13 says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So everybody that's in hell will get out of hell for a minute or for a while. And it ain't going to be fun either. They're not leaving it and going, getting a break for a while. You see, if you died, lost today, you're going to go straight to hell like the rich man in Luke 16. And you're going to beg for one drop of water on your tongue. But one day you'll be lifted up to be judged at the great white throne. 
So you'll get out of hell for a minute or however long it takes. And imagine being someone that's been in hell for 2,000 years, burning, and you're called up to stand before God. And maybe there's some little ounce of hope in you thinking, well, maybe he'll change his mind and say, okay, you've spent long enough in hell. Now come with me to heaven. But that's not how it's going to be. He's just going to open the books and show you just how bad the lake of fire is going to be for you. And imagine being somebody like the Pope or one of these TV preachers that's not really saved and they've led so many people astray and just lived like a spiritual pretender all their life, these religious hypocrites, and him tell them just how many people that they've damned to hell and how bad hell is going to be for them. You see, God is just, he's not going to let, you know, a average, hardworking man who's good to his family, good to his wife, but never got saved, that man's not going to face the same amount of torment in hell as these spiritual pretenders, these pedophile priests, these sex trafficker people. They're both going to go to hell for eternity, but God's just. He's not going to let the... the a less wicked person suffer just as much as these extremely overly wicked people. They're going to be scorched by fire. They're going to burn and burn for all eternity. The smoke of their torment will keep going. And the second death awaits. That's the next thing. Revelation 2014. You'll see the second death awaits. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're born once, you'll die twice. And if you're born twice, you'll die once. Hell has eternal punishment for eternal sin against eternal God. You see, the second death awaits. And it's an eternal death. And describe to you about eternity, if a bird went to every beach in the world and carried every grain of sand in the world to the moon, one sand at a time, by the time he got done moving every grain of sand to the moon, eternity wouldn't even be started. If the earth was only land with no water, and a little baby ant continuously walked around the earth, when he had the earth wore down to the size of a marble, eternity would just be getting started. No temporal things of this life are worth an eternity of burning. But the second death awaits, and it's an eternal death, forever dying, but never dying. You are forever paying for your sin. So the second death awaits at the great white throne. And people's names are scribbled from the book. Revelation 20, 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Those who are at the great white throne, whose names aren't in the book, are cast into the lake of fire. Now there will be some people at the great white throne judgment whose names are in the book. Because you've still got the people from the tribulation and the millennium who were saints that weren't judged at the judgment seat of Christ, so they're judged at the great white throne, so their names are in the book. But the lost, there's lost people's names are not in the book. And the greatest thing you can know is if your name is in the book of life. Those who are, in the, who are cast into the lake of fire have had their names blotted out. Everyone's name starts out in the book of life, but those who reject Jesus Christ have their names scribbled out. Exodus 32, 32 through 33 says, Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So there's some names that get taken out. In Revelation 3, 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. In Philippians 4, 3, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in 
the book of life. So is your name in the book of life. How do you get your name in there? How do you make sure your name's in it and not been blotted out? Well, you come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner you are, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. He paid your payment on the cross. You were going to pay for your sins in hell. And you are going to pay for your sins in hell if you don't get saved. But the Lord paid for that. He paid for your sins. Now all you have to do is come to him. Best way you know how and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for me. And I want to accept your payment for sin. I want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be saved. That's all you got to do and you'll be saved. You're accepting the payment. You know, it's not like you're begging. You're not begging. You know, he's got his hand out offering you the payment. You just got to look, look up and take it. That's all you got to do is just take it. And the best way you know how, just come to him. You, it's no magic words. You just say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. Save me. And you, you take it. And... You won't have to worry about your name being blotted out. But the next thing, at the great white throne judgment, there will be spirits judged. It says in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And Paul's basically saying, you know, if we can judge angels after the judgment, then we should be able to judge the smallest matters of this life. And imagine being a saint at the great white throne judgment, judging angels an angel who was greater in power than might than you all that time but now your vile body is fashioned like unto his glorious body the Lord's body and you're no longer mortal you've put on immortality and you're more powerful than that angel and you're more righteous than that angel because you got the righteousness of Jesus Christ imagine judging those angels that sinned, those angels that left their first estate, that had been reserved in everlasting chains under darkness all that time. Imagine, imagine that. And Im then imagine seeing Satan cast out. There'll be spirits judged, and then Satan's going to be cast out in Revelation 20 and verse 10. It says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. You see, the beast and the false prophet were cast into the lake of fire at the second coming. The great white throne judgment doesn't happen until like a thousand years later. So they are presently still at that time in the lake of fire burning. Showing you it's not just a thing where you burn up and then you get out. They were still there. They're still there and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan cast out forever. No more Satan. No more subtle serpent no more prince of the power of the air walking about seeking whom he may devour walking to and fro on the earth and then the next thing people are going to be speechless it says in matthew twenty two eleven, and when the king came in to see the guests he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment and he saith unto him friend how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless See, when the devil stands up there, he's not going to be able to talk his way out of it. He's going to be speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You think you're going to have a lot to say to God when you stand in front of him, but you're really not. It says in Matthew twenty-two forty-six, And no man was able to answer him a word, Neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. When Jesus was here and people was asking him questions, trying to catch him in his speech, he would come back with something that would make them speechless. And that's the way people are going to be at the great white throne. It says in Romans 3, 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. 
when you stand at the great white throne, maybe the Lord's going to give you a chance to say something, ask something. But he'll just leave you speechless with his response. He will always overcome when you judge him. But when you're at the great white throne judgment, standing as a lost man, you'll be speechless. There's no way that you'll be able to overcome because you didn't believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's all you got to do. Come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are. You deserve to go to hell, but Jesus died in your place. Just say, Lord Jesus, I want to accept your payment. I'm believing on you, and you're saved. You'll be saved, and you'll have eternal life.